Hello, 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 everybody. I am going live. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? I claim in Jesus' name that you are doing blessed and highly favored. I am actually inviting people real quick. Please, um, if you're just coming on here, if you could please share the seed, uh, share the seed of, uh, sow the seed of sharing this video. Uh, so that other people can get the good word of God. Also, a uh, new thing that I'm starting is if you can like and share the video and put done in the comments, I will be putting your name into a drawing twice a week and I will be um, doing drawings for different things. So if your name is pulled, I will private message you uh, just so that we can get the word of God out there. It's, it's so important to me. I love God so much. If you're on here, I can't see exactly who is on here at the time, but if you could please kind of just wave or something, let me know who you are. Um, that would be awesome. And so today we are going to be studying Judges chapter 6, verse 12. Um, once again, if you can sow the seed of sharing this video, God is good. Here we go. It's about to go down, y'all. Um, okay, here we go. Alright, y'all ready? Let's do this. Alright, team. So, we're going to be speaking about Judges chapter 6, verse 12. Verse 12. And it says, When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And I'm going to just read a little bit further from that. That was the main subject that I want us to really look at, is the Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. We all have gifts from God, you guys. But as I go further, it says, But, Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did the, did the Lord, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? So God is saying, Am I not sending you? Do I not give you the strength? <clears throat> and it's crazy because we need to be warriors for God, y'all. We need to fulfill His will. We are all given unique and beautiful gifts from God. The most, And most of the times we just write them off because either we think that we're not good enough or we are told... We tell people, or we are told, that's not our calling. So we end up missing wonderful opportunities and chances to do something that God had spectacular in His will for us. It's crazy how the world can allow us to write ourselves off from God's will. And even the book, of, and even in the book of Judges, like I read a minute ago, starting at verse twelve, where Gideon he told us to do, uh, where where God Gideon was told to do something, like we're all told to do something for the will of God. And and he, you know, he questioned God several times. Gideon questioned God several times. If we are able to get in line with God's word, uh, with. with if we are able to get in line with the, with the Lord and step out of flesh and walk in spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, y'all, and not drag our feet and question God on everything that we do, because see, when we question God with everything that we do, we are really self-destructing ourselves because we are running on self-will and not God's will. And it's crazy. We don't even see it. A lot of the times, we will 
get a blessing from God and be like, okay, yep, that's right. I did it. Thank you, God. Don't need you no more. Um, and then we can, we continue to say, God, why? Why is all this happening? Why is all this happening? And we don't realize that we are self-destructing ourselves because we decide to live on self-will and not God's will. So I have a question to ask you first before... I, I, I do have a question I want to ask you, but first I want to give you some um, common characteristics of self-destruction. And please understand that self-destruction is unintentional. People do not enjoy hurting themselves or ruining themselves. Whatsoever. They don't. They don't. One, we can hold on to self-defeating mindset, struggling with thoughts like, I will not be able to make it or I am not good enough. For this, just like Gideon said in the book of Josh, uh, Judges, he had self-defeating mindset like many of us have, and it's a constant flow of negative thoughts. A self-defeating mindset can be self-defeating habit that we become. And what is nothing more that comes from Satan is habit, bad habits. We have self-defeating habits. And if we have a self-defeating habit, then how can we align with God? And because of them habits, we, we, we have a hard time surrendering to God. Two, we hide from our emotions. See, because a lot of the times we think we can hide from God. You know, and, and it's crazy, especially when we're not doing the right thing. We say, well, if we do this, I'm sure he won't see us. If we stay in the house and do it here or whatever the situation may be, he won't see us. Only we know what we're doing. But it's obvious to the world and to God. Um, which, personally, I don't care about the world, what the world thinks. I just care about what God thinks. We, are, we hide from our emotions. And if we're hiding from our emotions, we fail to recognize positive and negative emotions. And it's very important for us to be able to recognize positive and negative emotions, you guys. That being said, if we cannot recognize positive or negative emotions, then how can we let go and let God? We can't. We're stuck. And this, and you know, in, in self isolating and hiding our emotions, it's possible that it, it comes from deep emotional scarring. But I'm here to tell you that God is the ultimate plastic surgeon. He can remove every blemish and every scar. Glory be to God. Can I get an amen? Ooh, God is good. So, number three. We sometimes fail to take action. We overindulge in doing the wrong thing. I need to know. We overindulge in doing worldly things instead of spending time in prayer, praise, and worship. And because of that, the enemy tricks us to think that it's not worth praying for in the first place because God wasn't going to help us at all. Have you guys ever felt like that? I mean, I personally can say that when I was in the world, I would feel like that. Well, it ain't worth it anyways. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because God ain't going to do it anyways. That's the enemy's tricks. That's his lies. That's his tactics. When we fail to take action in prayer, praise, and worship, we are being set up by Satan for failure from the very single start. How can we walk by faith and not by sight according to 2 Corinthians 5, 7 if we depend on worldly things or depend on ourselves? We will cost ourselves the loss of relationship with the Holy Spirit and beautiful opportunities to fulfill His will if we, have to do, if, if we do this. And you know, as I sat here this evening writing this sermon, I thought to myself, My God, thank you for helping me. Thank you for delivering me out of every situation that I'm speaking on that I had went through in this sermon that I wrote tonight. 
You see, because this is the kind of behavior that will stop our success and our gifts and our blessings from God. How can we activate our gifts from God and, our, and receive our blessings if we're stuck inside of this type of mind frame? Four, we hold on to forced incompetence. See, and I, I just want to... <clears throat> I don't know if you guys are seeing the as before I go into number four the, the what I'm what I'm getting to here is is what I'm getting to is as I'm going down this list that I had wrote through this sermon it, it is it's a list of self-destructiveness that we do to ourselves okay we do to ourselves because we feel defeated and I have to once again say that according to Judges chapter six verse twelve, the word the the word is the word is with you, mighty warriors. The Lord is with you, mighty warriors. I'm sorry. The Lord is with you, mighty warriors. I have a little bit of a speech impediment every once in a while, but I am still perfectly made by God, y'all. Um, <clears throat> so I'm trying to show you the destructive. Things that Satan can do to us without us even knowing it. But if we let go and let God, he can deliver us from every single thing that I'm talking about here. So when I say we hold on to force and competence, have you ever sold yourself short from God's gift He has said that he has given us? And when we like saying for us, I'm just not good at doing that or maybe that's not my calling. Oh, God, don't, no, no, that job ain't for me. I don't got the gift of gab, some people would say, or, or, or whatever it may be. But, you know, Satan will try to make us believe we don't qualify in certain things in our life when God says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. My God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Unfortunately, once again, once again, this mindset will take us off of God's path of love, blessings, and the will that he has in store for us. And once again, we are living on self-will and self-thoughts that are embedded and implanted to us by the devil's lies. Number five, we are socially isolated. We isolate ourselves from the voice of God in a sub... In, from a subconscious choice because of the negative thoughts that we have about ourselves. That we have allowed the devil to implant in our minds. We even think that we're doing the world a favor by isolating. We do. It's crazy. By staying away from everybody, Satan's biggest lie. He wants us to feel that way so that we are not able to fulfill the purpose of God. Because if we were able to be fulfill the purpose of God, then his purpose would be completely demolished, crashed, you guys. Gone. Over, O V, and, and 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 so Satan will use his same old lies, schemes, and tactics to try to make us self-isolate, so that we cannot be around people and do the will of God, so that we cannot praise with each other and worship with each other, so that we cannot spread the gospel, have our feet ready, like the full armor says, our boots of peace of readiness to go spread the gospel. How can we do that if we self-isolate? And then when we self-isolate, we self-destruct once again because of Satan's lies and schemes. And not just that. When we're doing that, we're also stirring up depression and anxiety. The devil, he wants to put that spirit onto us of depression and anxiety. Because he knows it will be a stronghold on us and it will stop us from doing the will of God. And what's crazy is, is um, it's not crazy, but it's the truth. Uh, not only will it be a stronghold, not only is it a stronghold and chains put on us, we're being chained down by this depression and this anxiety. Because I say from the devil, when we isolate ourselves and stop, and, and he puts these lies in our head, then we get suicidal thoughts. These are spirits that he's putting on us to stop us from doing the will of God. It is. And we can be delivered from that. 
We just have to let go and let God and remember that the Lord will be with us. We are mighty warriors for God. Six. We are unnecessarily self-sacrificial. We are so focused on making others happy that we forget that all we have to do is walk in obedience, y'all. And make God happy and then things will fall into perfect place and peace around us no matter what the situation is. No matter what it is. Maybe sometimes we can really believe we are doing the right thing. But it is really self sabotaging because once again we are doing self will and not God's will see we only know we're doing God's will when we can get into a nice peaceful quiet area and speak to God you guys in prayer in fasting make yourself a war room there is nothing more powerful than a war room make yourself a war room and get intimate with God See, we, it's okay to do good things. God always wants us to be kind and do good deeds. But if we are not doing God's will then, and we're doing self-will, then what good is it, the will at all? So that's why I encourage you once again, make a war room. Talk to God. Make sure that God is telling you to do this. And also, I, I want you to know that not all things good, not all good things that are given to us from people are blessings from God. Because Satan... He can make things look really good, too. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. That's why it's so important. And then when it turns sour, it starts out sweet until you bite into that apple. And then there's a worm in there, y'all. If it came from Satan. And then we get upset. And we're like, God, why'd you do this? And God's trying to tell you, it didn't come from me. You, we, we, you went on self-will once again. That's not from me. That's from Satan. But I gave you is milk and honey. The land of milk and honey. But And, and it's crazy. I, I got to go a little bit off subject here. I'll do that in a minute. Hold on. Let me finish this real quick. We're doing self-will, not God's will. And then we are left mentally and physically exhausted because we never truly looked for, to God to be a part of what we did. We didn't look for God to be a part of what we did. We looked more on to the person accepting us. And then you have number seven, self-medication of self-destruction. Boy, the devil is such a liar. A lot of people use drugs and alcohol to escape life and emotional situa situations. Meanwhile, that has been another stronghold and chain put around our bodies, to put on us to make a self-destruct, make us self-destruct and fall behind, and put a veil over our eyes and hear false voices in our mind that have no purpose, that we have no purpose, that we are worthless, that God does not want us, that we are just garbage and. Nobody wants any, no, 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 we're just, we're an outcast now. That we're not good enough. That now God hates us. And see, that's our mistake. That's our mistake. That's the biggest mistake we make. We self-medicate. And we, and then we have these illusional thoughts that come from the devil whispering in our ears. See, because a good we know one thing I can tell you and two things for sure that I do understand and I do know without a, a, a doubt is this right here. God is love. God is an encourager. And the devil's voice is a destruction. God is an encourager. And the devil's voice is destruction. So if he, you're saying, if you're hearing that you're not good enough and God hates you, God is not saying he hates you. Absolutely is not saying that. The devil is a lie. God does not make mistakes, y'all. God turns messy situations into messages. And he is the potter, we are the clay. And even if the pot, which is us, is broken... And it seems unfixable. It's crazy that the 
master of the, the, the potter that mastered this beautiful clay pot, even if it got broken, he could still go back in there and ravel it into the most beautiful and most prized possession that he has. It's crazy that you could take a broken pot and the, the potter can refix it into something so beautiful and put it on a shelf and somebody will be like, I want that right there. Instead of getting all the perfect ones that he made that never broke at all. And, you know, um, I, I encourage that we write down the scripture, Psalms 118, verse 6. As we're going and we're we're being defeated and we're and we're battling things in life, we have to repeat to ourselves. And I said this last night on my live that um, we have to start writing the scriptures on the tablet of our heart. How can we put on the? We have to put the full armor of God on, according to Ephesians chapter six, starting at verse ten. We have. A lot of things, these nations are starting to go against nations, y'all. And, um, we're going to end up losing our Bibles. And we will not be able to fight the enemy or the devil's lies, schemes, and attacks without having God's word on the tablet of our heart. Psalms 118, verse 6 is, The Lord is on my side and I will not fear. So if you know the Lord is on your side and you will not fear, then that means what, you guys? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means we don't have to listen to the devil's lies. He is a liar. The truth is not in him. The devil is a liar and the truth ain't in him. That's what I say all the time. God is good even on our worst days. That's what I say all the time. When somebody asks me how I'm doing, y'all, God is good even on my worst days. That's how I'm doing. And you know, when I say that, it catches a lot of people's attention. And they're like, wow, I really needed to hear that. We do need to speak God. We, we need to start speaking life into each other. We have to start speaking life into each other. God never said the weapons would not form against us. He just said they would never prosper. And you know, the faith to be able to move mountains in our prayer, or, or, or to move mountains even in our faith, begins with our patience to be able to sift sand. Do you know what a sifter is? A sifter is like when you take flour and you go like this to be able to make it sift. When we have patience enough to sift sand, then we will have faith to move mountains with it's crazy because we have to get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling with each other, slander, along with every kind and form of malice. And if a lot of people don't know what malice means, it means I hate that you hold in your heart towards somebody because something they have done or something you don't like about them or something that is just inside of you because the devil is just a lie. Maybe you were raped. Maybe you were hurt. Maybe you were beat up as a child. I don't know what it may be, but we have to get rid of this malice. God can deliver. I am a walking testimony. We have to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving to each other, just as Christ forgave us. How are we going to make it into heaven and be forgiven if we cannot forgive the, the ones as we want to be forgiven from God? And I challenge you tonight... To make a list, you guys. Make a list. On one side, I want you to make a list of everybody that has hurt you. And I want you to literally get specific with this list. I promise, I do. I want you to write their name down, how old you were, what they did to you, as many things that they did to you, each person, okay? Then I want you to get another notebook pad of paper. And I want you to write down everything from the time you've been a child that you've done to hurt God. And on that same pad of paper, I want you to write down every mean thing and everything that you've done. Even though you don't remember it right now, you will once you start making this list that you have done to other people. Maybe it was a thought that you said in your head about the people. Like, look at that person. They're on dope. Or 
maybe it was a thought and that's hateful it is because everybody is fighting their own demons I'm going to tell everybody something. I see all over YouTube people making laughing stocks of people that are suffering from depression. People are making laughing stocks of people that are suffering from anxiety. People are making laughing stocks of people that are drunk or on drugs. But please remember that I say this. God will remind everybody that laughed. And everybody that hurt these people, even, in, even if they never knew they got hurt by them, He will make their enemy their footstool. We have to be very careful about how we treat God's children. And we are all God's children. That means we have to be careful how we treat each other. There is no reason why we cannot come all together as one union. One unity in Christ. Why do we always got to separate and divide? Why? Why does one person's gift have to be better than the other one's? Why? <laughs> why? Why is it a competition? Because according to scripture, it says that we're supposed to work as one body. It never said nothing about competition, y'all. Jesus. Not one time. Man made competition. I hear a lot of people say, since this pandemic has started, and it is, oh God, it drives me nuts. This is the new normal, wearing these masks. Okay, that's fine. It very well may be to a lot of people, but why can the new normal not be calling on to God? Asking God to fix this. Have we not seen yet that these things are not working? These, these shots are not working because God is trying to prove a point that He is God. And He will sit us down and sit us still and let us know that He is God. Jesus. Everybody got excited because the mask mandation got pulled. Now they got it back up. It's required, mandated that we have to wear a mask again. If we were more focused on building a relationship with God and seeing what our purpose is, to serve him and realize that nothing good comes out of that but nothing but good comes out of that instead of self-destructing self-destructing ourselves with serving Satan not even and, and a lot of us don't realize that we're doing that so let me let you know I do understand I was there I have been there I have done that and didn't even know I was doing it until God showed me different What a mighty God we serve. I can tell you, I know for a fact God is love. God is nothing but love. Have you guys ever been in a situation where you're really, really going through something in life? And, and, and when you're going through something, somebody just out of nowhere says, God bless you. Or how are you doing today? And it just makes your head lift up and you're like, oh my God. These people, I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, Lord. I, you, 
and, and it automatically when they say God bless you or I'm praying for you or how are you doing to even acknowledge that you still exist it makes you feel wonderful everything from God is good everything if that lifts your spirits how much more can God do we put more trust in self will than God's will if anything that I have spoken of today has costed you your peace of mind then that means that you have definitely overpaid yourself to Satan's lies It's true. I did. If anything I spoke this evening has costed you your peace of mind, anything that you have, if anything I spoke you've been through and it's costed you peace of mind, you guys, you have overpaid yourself to Satan's lies. And he's lame. He's got the same, same, same tactics that he has used for thousands of years because he has no power and the only power he has is the power that we give him. So we need to stop. God has the power, all the power. He is the mighty God, the one and only God. He is the one that creates everything. We give the devil too much credit. We say, ooh, Satan is attacking me. But here's the thing. He very well may. Like I said, God never said that the weapons would inform. He just said that they would not prosper. Weapons are always going to form against us, especially when we're doing the right thing. Because we done made him mad. But we cannot be scared of that. We have to remember that there is an eternity either way. Like I said last night. We can either have an eternity in heaven. Or we can have eternity of torture in hell. So we have to step out of fear and know that God will deliver us. He will never allow no weapon to be formed against us. To prosper. He will not allow an accusing tongue to succeed. And he will put to shame people that go against us when we're doing the right thing. And, um, I love you guys. Once again, I um, thank you for watching this live. I hope that you guys got something out of this. If you could sow the seed of sharing this video some other, so other people can uh, have a chance to watch it. And also, if you are on YouTube, if you could press like, and subscribe I'd be very grateful if you can share this video like it and then also put done inside the comments I'll put your name inside of a drawing and I will be doing a prize t two days out of the week and if your name is pulled I will send you your awesome prize because God is love um, I ask that you guys get inside of Joshua, or Judges chapter 6, starting verse 2. Um, I also have set up a page on Facebook. It's called Stella Bula's Ministries. I'm trying to get everything I need together for my ministry to be able to help the homeless. Um, I'm also trying to help um, put together some hygiene packets, some clothing packages, some snack packages, 
we were in public the other day and a woman walked up to me and she says, please, I'm just hungry and I'm thirsty. I'm just hungry and I'm thirsty. And like, you know, I, I hear a lot of people say, you can go to the shelters, you can do this. Yeah, you can, but a lot of places require a ID and a lot of people are going through something because they have self-destructed or de been defeated by the devil. But they still have a chance to rise up again if we show our love. Um, I've also got a fundraiser going to be able to help me get a podcast going so I can do the Word of God several times a day. This is really a passion that I have. I'd like to get a tent, portable tent, and a portable altar on wheels, if possible, so that I could start preaching the good news inside of the deepest areas that people are too scared to go to. I'm not scared. Um, so... I have a Vimo account set up, and I have a Facebook fundraiser account. If you guys could please share that, I would be very grateful. Um, and if you're needing a receipt for the uh, donation that you made, I don't have a problem sending you a receipt. Um, this was an amazing, I think, video that I've done tonight. Uh, if you guys are just now getting on here, if you can go back and re-watch this, do the rewatch on it. I hope that you get something out of it. Leave me a comment of what you think. If you've got a scripture in mind that you'd like me to do a study on, please feel free to put it inside the comments. I'm very excited to um, do these studies with you guys. Um, my heart is here really for God, and my heart is here to serve God's purpose. I love you guys. May God bless every one of you guys. Also on Instagram, God bless you guys too. I will be uh, sharing you if you're interested in um, following me on Facebook or YouTube. Facebook, if you're interested in following me on Instagram or on YouTube, please send me a private message or in the comments let me know and I will send you my information so that I can, you guys can add me as a friend or whatever you may would like to do. I will be sharing my new page, my ministry page, on uh, Facebook, and I'll put the link inside my YouTube page. Um, my YouTube page is Stella Vula's Ministry, S-T-E-L-L-A, V as in Victor, O-U-L-A, comma, S, Ministries, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S. If you can like and subscribe and share to it. Um, my, oh, Destiny, baby, I love you. I am so proud of you. You know, um, sweetheart, when you get time, please rewatch this video. I've done, um, finished up with the sermon and kind of giving people information about what's going on and what, what goals I have for God's purpose. But I really want you to watch this video from the start, baby. I love you so much. Alrighty, dear. Um, and I'm going to say good night and goodbye, guys. Love y'all.